We close this week with a second look at the most important news story of the past year, perhaps of a generation, the introduction of performance-enhancing drugs into camel beauty contests. Earlier this week, we brought you the news that 12 camels were disqualified at a Saudi camel pageant after they were found to have used Botox. But even without cheating, how do you judge a camel pageant? Patty McHugh is a camel herder, a camel trader, and an all-around dromedary expert. He joins us tonight. Mr. McHugh, thank you very much for joining us. Have you ever seen this kind of doping in the camel community? <laughs> Look, it's a bit of an unusual story, that's for sure, to have Botox put in their lips in their head to make them look nicer. But uh, it's not unusual, I suppose. There's big money, big prestige, and you know, thousands and thousands of camels at these events. Everybody wants to win, and whatever it takes, I suppose. Yes. I mean, and look, I just want to be clear up front, given the environment in this country, I'm not objectifying camels at all. I mean, I, I appreciate camels for who they are, not just how they look. But how do you tell the difference between an attractive camel and, let's just say, a less attractive camel? Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. They, they have certain guidelines at these competitions where it's configuration, you know, um, how their ears are pricked, how their lips drop down. And one of the main things in these competitions is how their lip drops down, their bottom lip. So I'd imagine that's where the Botox is being put, if anywhere at all, to make that lip look fuller and nicer. I mean, it's really just a group of people get together and say, this is the criteria and this is what we're going to do. It's a bit of a way of life, I suppose, for them over there. Is a, is a droopy camel lip preferable to a taut camel lip? <laughs> Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Well, in, in their competition rules, I would imagine that's one of the things they look for. They also look for different things like the big humps and the, the ears pricked up and everybody looking happy, you know. But certainly the big droopy lip is um, pretty good. I mean, I think I've, there's a photo there of a, I think it's a $5 million black Saudi camel that's just magnificent. And it's got the biggest droopiest lip on the planet, you know. It's quite yeah. amazing. It's a beautiful camel. Do camels know when you're looking at their humps? Can they sense it? Do they what? Sorry, when you're looking at their humps. Yeah, do they know? Do they, I mean, do they feel uncomfortable if they feel like you're staring at their humps? <laughs> I must look for that. No, I've never noticed that, to tell you the truth, Tucker. No, I've never. Okay. I think we may have lost our connection to Mr. McHugh, who we should note. Uh, once more is one of the world's preeminent experts on camels of all kinds, single hump camels, double hump camels. We should also say that though we're making light of this story, this is not a small thing in the Saudi kingdom where beauty pageants featuring people are less common, uh, but these are a very big deal. Mr. McHugh, we have you back, I believe. The connection has been restored. Yes. Um, can you just describe very quickly, we're almost out of time, but the best looking camel you've ever seen? The best looking camel, I mean, so we've got some magnificent wild camels in Australia. They're truly remarkable, big, healthy, great looking animals, except we don't have beauty competitions where, like they do in the Middle East. They have, you know, 20,000 camels will turn up for a, a beauty competition, but we could certainly hold our own in Australia with our wild camels, that's oh, for I sure. Oh, I bet you can. No, Australia always holds its own. <laughs> Mr. McHugh, thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. Great to see you.